Year after year, the Subaru Forester has ranked among CR's top-rated small SUVs and almost aces our surveys for reliability and owner satisfaction. But the rapid pace of competition means even segment leaders can't rest on their laurels. Hence, the company used the 2018 New York Auto Show to unveil its latest Forester model. Now that Subaru has added a new three-row SUV, the Ascent, the Forester ranks squarely in the middle of the automaker's lineup. It's larger than the Impreza sedan and about the same size as the Outback wagon. The new Forester will be offered in standard, premium, limited, touring, and new sport trim lines. All-wheel drive is standard. With a longer wheelbase, the company says the new Forester is roomier inside, most noticeably in rear seat legroom. Also, Subaru says headroom, hip room, and shoulder room have been increased. Anyone even faintly knowledgeable about Subarus will instantly recognize the new model. Its boxy, upright stance, which helps it offer some of the easiest access to the front seats of any car, and airy cabin make it seem like the least intimidating SUV available. New LED headlights are standard on all models. The company says the 2019 Forester gets more cargo space with a larger gate opening and that the load floor sits flatter. According to Subaru, golfers can look forward to fitting a full-sized golf bag sideways in the back of the new model. A power rear gate is standard on limited and touring trim lines and optional for premium and sport versions. Keeping with its outdoorsy image, the Sport model features a rear gate LED floodlight that illuminates the area around the rear gate when opened. Subaru says the new Forester is the quietest yet, with greater efforts made to reduce noise, vibration, and harshness. A past complaint we've had with Foresters is intrusive engine noise during passing maneuvers, so we'll be eager to see whether this has improved. New for the infotainment system are standard Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. All models come with a new version of Subaru's ubiquitous 2.5-liter, four-cylinder engine. Updates have boosted horsepower from 170 to 182. A continuously variable transmission is standard. The company claims that the 2019 model will be quicker than the outgoing one and return better fuel economy. Our last tested Forester returned an excellent 26 mpg overall. The Sport, Limited, and Touring models will come with a driver-adjustable all-wheel drive system that offers specific settings for piloting through snow, dirt, deep snow, and mud. 2019 Albanian Lex models come standard with Subaru's EyeSight Driver Assist technology, which includes automatic pre-collision braking adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning, and lane keeping assist. The top shelf touring model also gets the company's driver focus system, which uses facial recognition software to recognize signs of driver fatigue or driver distraction. The driver focus feature can also store up to five drivers' preferences for seat position, climate, and infotainment, among others. Other available features include reverse automatic braking, blind spot detection with lane change assist, and rear cross traffic alert. Reverse automatic braking can apply the vehicle's brakes if an obstacle is detected while reversing. The Forester has been rocking CR's testing for years, consistently hitting the sweet spot among small SUVs, delivering a roomy interior, impressive safety equipment and crashworthiness and outstanding visibility in a right-sized, affordable package. Considering that all models come standard with all-wheel drive, fuel economy has been excellent. Adding a touch more room to the interior, lots of standard safety gear, and some emphasis on reducing cabin noise, the next Forester looks poised to carry on Subaru's winning formula. In new
news that will actually surprise no one at all, we're hearing that Tesla won't start delivering the most affordable base Model 3 until late this year, which likely means sometime next year or next decade according to Tesla's optimistic delivery estimates. In positive news, Tesla has begun delivering Model 3s with some regularity, building almost 8,000 per week at this point according to Bloomberg's Tesla Model 3 tracker. But to get back to the doom and gloom, it's nowhere close to the 10,000 per week Tesla had originally promised, the 5,000 per week it downgraded to last November, and now they're not expecting to hit that 5,000 per week until this summer. Car and Driver reports that the base model will still be delivered at the promised $35,000 in late 2018 inches, and that the dual-motor AWD versions should hit the production line in mid-2018. Current deliveries have all been top dollar, single motor, big battery versions, which makes business sense, but crushes the dreams of all those $35k, 200 mile EV in early 2018 dreamers that lined up with their deposits and thought putting their money down meant getting something in return in a reasonable amount of time. Enough with the doom and gloom and let's shine a ray of hope back out there. Bloomberg arrives at its production estimates by tracking registered and reported VINs and although their production estimates are cautious, last week both input sources reached new highs, so it could indicate Tesla is finally hitting that exponential growth in production we've all been waiting for. It can come soon enough because the first of Tesla's premium competitors has arrived from Jaguar, the I-Pace, and Mercedes, BMW, Mini and Audi should have full electrics flooding dealerships by next year, though BMW has stated that it is in no rush to get into the mass market EV game until it is more profitable. Subaru isn't exactly known for developing emerging technologies for its vehicles, so we'll bet you'd never expect the automaker to equip the 2019 Forester with facial recognition technology. But that's exactly what it did, Subaru has announced at the New York International Auto Show that it developed a feature for the vehicle that uses facial recognition to detect driver fatigue and distraction. Driver focus comes as a standard feature for the most expensive touring version of the vehicle, though it's unclear if you can pay extra to have it installed on another model. The feature runs on top of Subaru's new driver assist system called EyeSight, which, unlike driver focus, will come pre-installed on all Forester models. It's not a hands-free driving technology, but it covers basic driver assist offerings, such as adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning and lane assist, as well as pre-collision braking. By being able to detect whether a driver is sleepy or tired, the system can be on the alert and activate eyesight's functions when needed. Driver Focus can store info on five drivers and remember their preferences when it comes to seat position, climate and multi-function display. So, it can work even for those looking to buy a 2019 Forester as a family vehicle when it comes out later this year. Battery electric car sales are low and growing more slowly than the Sierra Snowbook. Even in green California, and despite a 30% increase over 2016, sales of battery electric vehicles accounted for only 2.5% of all sales in the state last year, according to the California New Car Dealers ASSN. The Nissan Leaf was the earliest practical BV on the road, and was a landmark vehicle when it debuted on American highways in late 2010. More than 300,000 of the little electric cars have been sold since, about half of them in the US, making the Leaf, by Nissan's reckoning, the top-selling global BV of all time. But the Leaf has gained company and lost market shares since 2010. Nissan said it sold 11,230 of them last year. According to the California Dealers Group, fewer Leafs were sold in the state in 2017 than the Chevy Bolt EV, Tesla Model S and Model X, and Fiat 500e. 
before you start cracking wise about Nissan needing to turn over a new leaf, the 2018 actually is a new leaf. The new model goes farther on a charge, recharges faster, has more features, is better looking and costs less than the 2017. The leaf profile is lower, longer and sleeker. With sportier edges, it looks more like a car and less like a science experiment than previous models. Range has risen to an EPA-approved 151 miles, up from 107 miles, powered by a 40 kWh lithium-ion battery, replacing the 30 kWh battery on earlier models. That, and some software changes have made the Leaf livelier. Horsepower and torque numbers are up substantially on the 2018 model, which jets silently from corner to corner and up to freeway speed. The range and battery life can also be extended using a variety of driving modes, giving the driver more control over how the Leaf's battery power is spent. A 6.6 kW onboard charger makes it possible to juice the Leaf up more quickly than previous models. Nissan says the Leaf can be charged at the rate of 22 miles of range per hour on a level 2 charger, or as fast as 90 miles in a half hour at a fast charging station. Among the standard new features is Nissan's e-pedal, a technology that allows the car to apply electronic braking when the driver reduces pressure on the accelerator. This slows the car, and will bring it to a complete stop, while returning energy to the battery. With practice, the actual brakes seldom need to be applied at all, which increases range and extends the life of the brakes. Nissan is proud of its ProPilot driving assistance feature which is now available in the LEAF. The program is designed to function as an adaptive cruise control system, applying braking and accelerating as needed, and helping the driver steer straight too. Nissan says, the feature is not an autonomous driving system but is a hands-on driver assistance tool, designed to reduce fatigue and stress by liberating the driver from constant use of the brake and accelerator pedals. ProPilot was first introduced in Nissan's Rogue, which aside from the LEAF is the only Nissan vehicle to feature the system. Nissan has given its LEAF a clean new dashboard look and has used fabric and plastics to produce effective sound editing. Around town and on the freeway, the LEAF is a nice, quiet car. The driver's cockpit is comfortable and spacious, though the back seats will be a little cramped for full-size adults. Those backseat folks are given cup holders but no plug-in ports for their devices. The storage area behind the front seats is adequate, and gets bigger when the rear seats are folded forward. But as on a lot of BEVs, there's a battery back there, which will make loading a bicycle or large box a little difficult. The entry-level leaf starts at $30,875. The car comes in S, SV and SL trim lines.